Hello everyone, this is Humanox and in today's quick tip I just want to quickly show you how we can sync up the Digitect uh, to the MPC Live and uh, what we can do with that. Um, it's very, very basic stuff, I must admit, and this is just for some of you who might get, uh, who might run into problems with this, uh, just so that you can see what we can do, kind of program change and stuff like that and everything. So let's quickly get started. Um, I'm in a hurry now <laughs> uh, because I uh, have to move to my family. Sorry for that, but um, let's quickly get going first. Um, on the MPC, I create a new project and I do the same on the Digitact so that everything is reset. Basic stuff as usual, so to say. So quick look at the routing. Um, MIDI output from uh, the MPC is connected to the MIDI input of the Digitect and the left and right output from the Digitect goes into the inputs from the MPC and I'm using an audio track now and set this thing to monitor so that I can hear my sounds. Uh, simple as that. Okay, now um, back to our MIDI stuff. Um, here's the thing. Um, if I want to control the Digitect uh, with its uh, internal tracks, I can already do this by just switching to the MIDI track right here. And I have my MIDI output port selected, which is MIDI output port A, and this is where the cable is connected. And now I can already control the individual channels, uh, easy as that. But uh, watch what happens when you hit play. Um, the sequence of the Digitech is not yet starting and it's also not uh, synced up. And uh, let's quickly fix this. And we fix this by going to the settings of the MPC and under sync, we first have to say send MIDI and we have to select uh, the MIDI clock so uh, that the Digitech can receive a MIDI clock. And I also need to tell the MPC where I want to send this information and I want to send it uh, over the same port. So I send it on MIDI out A. And uh, now when I go back, I have to go into the project settings of the Digitect into the MIDI config, sync. And as you can see, transport receive and clock receive is already active. So uh, when I now hit play, the sequencer starts on the Digitect. And um, I can, just to give you a quick example that the sync is actually okay, uh, I do a simple pattern again, adjusting that kick a little bit and let's hit play. And now right here, take this hi-hat and go into the step sequencer here and place some steps. We are, we need one bars. And now have a listen. So that's perfectly in sync. Absolutely fantastic. If I go to the main screen, I can also adjust the tempo. And you see how the Digitech is slowly updating. Can also go down. Yeah, that's basically it already. Yeah, and let's actually select this hi-hat and I want to uh, modify um, yeah, I want to modify uh, the decay of this hi-hat via uh, CZ now. And uh, if I have a look into the settings right here, it says that the decay time is CC number 80. So uh, I go to the program edit and here are my CC numbers. And here's a little bit of a problem with the MPC because uh, you can see on some pages it tells me the CC numbers but on other pages, it, uh, on other values, it doesn't. So there's just uh, generic names uh, sitting there and I have to know where this thing is. So I have CC89 right here, CC85, and this is a little bit complicated. So I have to uh, dial around and have to look what it is, but I know uh, from an earlier test that this is general purpose five in that case. But um, if I would dial on this thing, and I'm on this higher track here. If I would dial on this thing, you see nothing happens. Because although I can trigger all the individual sounds with the pads directly, I, uh, when I want to send something, I have to select the MIDI channel first. So by default, 
this hi-hat track is MIDI channel 7, so I select MIDI channel 7. And now, let's go into program edit, and now it should work, you see? So I can... do something like this. Now one might, uh, you might ask yourself, uh, how cool would it be if I can record that? Have a look when I activate the automation on the MPC and go back to program edit and trying to uh, actually record it. Let's have a look if that works. See, it has recorded it. As you can see right here, it has recorded this thing. The automation is in there, but since I hit record, <laughs> I have overwritten my notes. So I have to go inside and have to play some new notes. Oops. Yeah, have a listen. Yeah, and it's uh, actually, yeah, quite cool, to be honest. And if I have a longer sequence, let's actually double the length several times. Uh, you can see how uh, far we can go with this. And this works for every parameter for as long as we can find it <laughs> on the MPC right here. So uh, let's quickly uh, do an overdub this time and let's start again. it's working. Yeah, so that's the thing. And uh, finally, I want to show you how we can uh, send program change messages. This is also very easy. And uh, for this to work, we first have to get rid of every uh, step here. So uh, we can see this a little bit better. Now I'm going onto this tr the track right here and I'm on pattern one. This is my kick. It's in here, so let's program some, some simple patterns now. Let's, let's go to the side actually. So we have something like this and I now copy this pattern, paste it. Oops. Go to this track and let's have a look. Here's our kick. Let's see. Our kick is here, yeah. Good. Let's try that out. Nothing would happen if I would send a program change because uh, on the second um, pattern, the pattern is the same, so... Find another track and do something. Very simple. Nothing's here. So... Now to make it work, it's actually uh, similar to what we had before with uh, the analog 4. We have to make sure that our auto channel is set correctly. So let's go inside MIDI config channels and we see the auto channel is set to channel 14. Now if I would send a program change now, this is done right down below here. If I send a program change and quickly bring up this menu, you can see nothing happens. However, if I switch this thing to uh, channel 14, and do the same again, I probably guess that still nothing happens. See that? Because finally, we have to activate program change receive. And I do this in the MIDI settings right here. So now, when I go to this pattern selection, 
it should work. See how it changes the patterns. I turn this off and when I start playing right here, the cool thing is, it's also in time. See? See? It waits for uh, the pattern to complete on the Digitect until it changes it. But since I have the automation going on up here, you see that it's even, uh, yeah, it can even record those program changes. Uh, you can see that it's uh, even recording the program changes. So uh, I could record pattern change that way on the MPC with ease. And now I can go in here and um, go to another track, make this a drum track and could even uh, add some of my own samples right here. And uh, let's quickly find something. And load that one up. First I have to sign it, now just something very simple, you know. I don't even have a clue how this sounds, it's just for demo purposes, mates. <laughs> just so that we can see we are more or less in sync with all of it. Let's quickly add some swing. And let's add some swing here as well. Let's try that out. You see, going back to track number one where my program changes are, I set this to this page and Hit overdub. Oh, I do not even have to hit overdub because right is already active. Now I switch it. Yeah, and that's how we can do it now. Um, I hope this was informative for you and answered a few of your questions you might have. R really basic stuff, actually, just in case you might run into trouble with this. So, um, yeah, I would say I see you in the next video, guys, and have a great time. <laughs> Bye.